take a look at this form i have here with this input and what i want you to notice is that when you click on an input you can type into it you see that the placeholder goes to the top and if the input is not empty the placeholder stays at the top but if the input is empty the placeholder comes down same thing for this one and if i clear this it comes down this is built with just html and css and absolutely zero javascript and in this video i'll be simplifying how i built this so we're going to be starting with this i have the result on the right here and on the left i have my html i have this form in this form i have this info span then i have this input group and in this input group i have two input blocks the first input block he has an id or full name with an empty placeholder and i would explain in a second why i have an empty placeholder then here i have a label and for this label i have the four attributes pointing to this id so that when you click on the label the input will become in focus i have the second input block and this one is for password and when we move over to the styles i have some basic styles here the form has some border and border radius the fill in for is at the center the input group has a display of flex with a gap of 20 pixels if i make this gap 40 pixels you see more gap between the input blocks but i'm going to change this back to 20 pixels so now let's begin to build our nice form coming here for the input block i'm going to have a position of relative here i'm going to have a custom x property i'll give this a value of 15 pixels a custom y property i'll give this a value of 10 pixels by the way, you don't always have to use custom properties. I'm just using it in this video just to show you how useful they can be. For this input, I'm going to give it a border of one pixel solid black. And then I'm also going to position it down here. And then for the input, I can use padding. And for my padding, you know padding is top, bottom, left, right. So for the top, bottom, I can use the var function and use my y custom property. And for the left, right, I can use my custom x property and now we have our input looking like this well the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to position this label at the center of the input so coming here we're going to have label position absolute we're going to give this a background color of white i'll show you why then for the left property here i can use the x custom property which is coming from the input block for the top I can use the Y custom property. Then I can give this a border of one pixel solid black also. Can give this a padding of zero and let's just say three pixels. Then I can give this a margin of zero. Now, if we come here, you can see the label is almost at the center, but it is not where I want it to be. So now I can do some calculations with the top to ensure it goes to the center. And this is where I can use the calc function in CSS. This allows you to execute mathematical expressions in your styles. So in this calc function i can move this var y which is for the y custom property so that is going to be 10 pixels so here i can say 10 pixels minus let's say 10 pixels minus 2 pixels for start now if i refresh this this is almost at the center if i make this three pixels well four pixels would look just about right yeah this looks good again you don't have to use custom properties i'm just using this just to show you as many tips as i can in this video now what you notice is that when you click on the label the input for the full name label becomes active and you can type i don't know if you can see some text at the back here same thing for the password if you click on it the input becomes active and if you type there is some text at the back but you cannot see it so the next thing to do now is when the input becomes in focus we want to push this label to the top and this is where we can use the focus pseudo class so we can say when the input is in focus we're now going to select the sibling label this is a sibling combinator and what this means is select the label sibling of this input so if you go back to our html you can see that this label and this input are siblings so when you say input and you use this sibling combinator it means select the label which is a sibling that comes after the input there is also the adjacent sibling combinator which is the plus but i'm just going to stick with this one if you want to learn more about combinators in css i have a video on that i'll link it in the video description you can check it out and then we're going to change the value of the top property and here again we use calc and what we're going to do here is the y custom property times minus one 
So currently the wipe property is 10 pixels, but we want it to be minus 10 pixels so it can go to the top and that's why I'm multiplying by minus 1. Now watch what happens when you click on the label, the input goes in focus and when the input is in focus, we select the label sibling and we change the top to this. I can also make this minus 1.5 seven so that it can be at the edge so if you click on this it comes in focus and you see it goes to the top if you remove it from focus it comes down if you put it in focus it goes to the top again now one thing here is when you begin to type into this input and you stop focusing you see that the label comes down but what we want here is that the label stays at the top when the input has some content well this is where we can use another pseudo class called placeholder shown but for this i'm also going to change the font size to 14 pixels i can also give Give this a color of green so now if we click on this it goes to the top it's 14 pixels and the color is now green so coming here we're going to say when the input does not the not pseudo class allows you to style an element when it does not have a selector so we're going to say when the input does not and then in this function, we now have the placeholder shown pseudo class. So again, when the input does not have its placeholder currently showing, we want to also select the sibling label combinator and apply all of these styles here. In fact, I'm just going to move this line from here and just put it here so what you're saying is when the input is in focus select the label and apply these styles and also when the input does not have its placeholder currently showing select the label and apply these styles now if we come here and we click on this if we have this the placeholder is currently not showing so the label stays at the top but if we remove all of this the placeholder is showing it's come it then it comes down now coming back to why i have the empty placeholder here if i don't have any placeholder here if i try to do this you can see that the label stays at the top even when i haven't typed anything even when the input is not in focus that is because our style here says when the placeholder is currently not showing since we don't have any placeholder attributes here it means there is no placeholder showing so that's why i had to put an empty placeholder here so that i can be able to use this placeholder shown pseudo class successfully now let's apply some transitions and before the transition another thing i want to do is the border should be one pixel solid transparent then when it is in focus the the border color should be black so for this label i want to apply a transition on the top property 300 milliseconds also on the color property the border color also on the font size now when you come here when you click on this you see that the label transitions to the top if you don't type anything it comes back down if you click on it and you type something and the empty placeholder which we have here is no longer showing the label stays at the top same thing for this one if you type something the label stays at the top if you don't type anything Thing, it comes back down now I want to show you another CSS tip you can see the way we have these two styles like this we can improve this by saying if the input is so the is pseudo class allows you to pass multiple selectors at once so here I can say if the input is in focus that is my first option another option if the input is not having its placeholder currently shown so here I've been able to pass two selectors for the input using the is pseudo class and then here I can now use my sibling combinator with the label and I can pass all these styles. If we come back here, we have the same thing and here we have the same thing. And if this becomes empty, it comes back down. If this becomes empty, it comes back down. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned one or two CSS tips from it. By the way, on my website, deco.com slash CSS project, you can find a bunch of CSS projects like this along with the code for it. Please give this video a like, share with others and subscribe for more tips like this and also you can check out my video on css combinators which should be somewhere on the screen see you in my next css video